Hello everyone, my name is Goma Signolo. Welcome to another video by Attention Matrix, where we try to make learning fun and easy. Please comment, like and subscribe if you would like us to continue making this content and you enjoy it or find it helpful. Now on to the next video. Let's get right into it. Okay, so in this video we will be looking at exponential functions. We will be continuing with our lesson uh, or our lessons on functions and we'll be looking particularly at the exponential function in this video. So let's get going. The exponential function takes the form of y is equal to a to the power of x. Now the different ways that this function can be expressed all, 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 of, all of the different ways fundamentally when you break down are this form. But I'm only going to be focusing on this form and I will be calling this form the original form. Okay, so I'll be calling it the original form and I will show you different variations where you can make additions to this form or you can amend, um, you can add stuff to this form so that uh, you force the exponential function to behave a certain way. But this is what I call the original form. And this is uh, the most important way to express the exponential function okay so i'm going to call this the original form now the exponential function um, looks as follows firstly i'm gonna uh, before i actually draw it out i'm, I'm just gonna um, define the parameters in the exponential functions the in this exponential function there's not a lot of them okay so what we see here y is just your dependent variable okay so for all of these functions your y is usually a dependent uh, your dependent variable this is your dependent variable what does this mean this means that it is dependent on another parameter okay and the parameter that it is dependent on is x and we call that x the independent variable okay we call it the independent variable. That's what we call x, okay? And the independent variable is essentially the variable that you change, okay? It is the variable that you change. So if you are dealing with, say, a physics problem and you've got two variables, one is the dependent and the other is the independent variable, the independent variable is the one that you would plot on your x-axis, okay? So this is your independent variable and then your independent variable, I'm going to call it iv, and then this is your dependent variable, your dv on your y-axis, okay? It's just for uh, clarity and for context. Okay, so, and a in this exponential equation is your constant, okay? That is your constant, okay? Or we call it a base as well. This is the base of your, of your exponential function, okay? So now, what does this exponential function look like? let me explain it in the form of an example okay so you've got your exponential function your already your exponential function taking on its original form looking like this say we are dealing with a function that looks like this this is 2 to the power of x now there are a couple of things that i'm going to explain that have to do with this with this function okay let's just plot it out first now if we plot out this function Let's try to draw out a Cartesian plane neatly. Remember to always label your Cartesian plane. Say this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, whatever. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Obviously, when you do this, you will plot this much neater than, than I am plotting it. You will draw it to scale. Okay. So if I were to plot this, let me just remove this Y here because it's confusing things. Okay. Just going to write it a bit further down. Uh, a bit further down. Okay. So that's your Y axis. That's your X axis. Now, if I were to plot this graph what would it look like well firstly let's just use random numbers okay let's say when x i'm just going to use the table method right the table method is essentially where you just 
draw a table and then you calculate each coordinate um, separately. Okay, so let's say when x, let's start from um, negative 1. Okay, when x is negative 1, y is 2 to the power of negative 1. Okay, if you punch this in your calculator, you're going to get 2 to the power of negative 1, which is going to give you 0 0.5. Okay, 0, 0,5. Okay, so uh, instead of writing it out like that, I'm just going to write the 0, 0,5. That's 1 over 2. That's 0, 0,5. Okay, so when x is negative 1, y is 0, 0,5. Okay, when x is 0, y is what? When x is 0, then we've got 2 to the power of 0. And that is going to give you 1. Okay, so that's 1. When x is 1, just erase that. When x is 1, remember this is just an example. I want to illustrate a couple of things. When x is equal to 1, then you've got y is equal to 2 to the power of 1. So that's 2. Let's do a final one. When x is 2, When x is 2, when that x there is 2, then you've got 2 to the power of 2, and that's going to give you 4. Then we're just going to extrapolate, uh, we're just going to extend the line uh, following the pattern that we will identify. Okay, so that's 4 there. So now if we were to plot this, if we were to plot these different points, what we would get is the following. So when x, so that that's the first one that we plot there. When x is equal to minus 1, minus 1 is there, right? Minus 1 is there. So when x is equal to minus 1, y is equal to 0, 0,5. 0, 0,5 is there somewhere. Okay, so then our point is going to be about there, right? That's where our point is going to be, right? Now, when x is equal to 0, y is equal to 1, okay? So then... 0 and 1, our point is going to be about somewhere there, slightly higher up there. Okay, now if we come back to this one, when x is equal to 1, and y is equal to 2. So x is equal to 1, y is equal to 2, is going to be about somewhere there. We're going to plot it. Uh, just going to try to plot it nicely. It's going to be about... up there okay and then when x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 4 so y is equal to 4 it's going to be 1 2 3 4 x is equal to 2 y is equal to 4 it's about there somewhere okay now you can see what this graph is doing right this graph is increasing at an accelerated pace at, a, at an increasing pace as you move to the right right so your graph does that okay and then as you move to the left it does that decreasing at an ex at, 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 a le at a less accelerated pace and then as it's going up there it's increasing at an accelerated pace okay so you can see what your graph is doing this is what your graph will look like okay now if you look at this graph here i'm going to explain a couple of things let me just uh, remove that we were just using that data to plot our graph so now that we've plotted it we don't need them anymore now if you look at this graph here what you will notice is that okay so let's say um Okay, this is your equation. This is the equation of your graph. And let's say that you want to find out what's going to happen to your graph as it moves further to the left. Okay, remember, this is the original graph. I will explain what I mean by original graph uh, and why I felt the need to call it the original graph as we move along, either in this video or in, or in the next lesson. Okay, so um, the equation is y is equal to 2 to the power of x, right? Now, what would happen if I said, okay, I want... The value of y when x is equal to minus 10 well you will tell me that y is equal to 2 to the power of minus 10 because where i have an x i've got minus 10 right so i just substitute minus 10 and um, get the answer so you will see that the answer that i get here will be 1 over 2 to the power of 10 okay I'll get 1 over 2 to the power of 10. 
and 1 over 2 to the power of 10. If I punch this into my calculator, if you punch this into your calculator, you will see that it's a number that is very close to 0. Okay, it's very close to 0. And then what's, what, would I, what, what, would you, what would happen if I said, okay, so we know that if I want x to equal minus 10, then I know that y would be almost equal to 0 or would be a number that's very close to 0, right? What if I said I want the value of y when x is equal to minus 100? Minus 100 is, a, is, is further, uh, further away that side to the left. So if I said I want x to be equal to minus 100, then the equation would be y is equal to 2 to the power of minus 100. And if you punch this into your calculator, you will get a number that's even more close to 0. Okay, 0, 0,000 something something, right? Um, you'll get a number that's even closer uh, to 0. So what, what do you notice happening here? Well, let me just erase all of this red. Let me erase all of this red so that I have space. Okay, so what do you notice? So the more I move to the left, right? The more I increase my x in the negative sense, or the more I decrease my x, but I increase it in magnitude towards the negative side, right? Towards the left hand side. Then the number that I get for y gets closer and closer to zero. It doesn't actually get to zero, but it gets closer and closer and closer to zero. So the more I move to the left, the closer I get to zero, right? And if you look at this graph here, right, if you look at this graph here, it's getting closer and closer and closer to the x-axis, okay? It's getting closer and closer and closer to the, to the x-axis that you, that's the axis that you see there, the x-axis. What does it mean? If it's getting closer and closer and closer to the x-axis, on your x-axis, on your x-axis, y is equal to zero, okay? So... Two things, your graph is moving towards zero. Why? In terms of the equations that we looked at, right, your value, the value of the answers you're getting for y are getting closer and closer and closer to zero. Now, graphically, in terms of the graph that we drew out here, the graph is getting closer and closer and closer to the y, uh, to the x-axis. And on the x-axis, we know that y is equal to zero. Okay, so we know that our graph will always be approaching zero it will always be approaching zero or it will always be approaching the x-axis um, the more we move to the left, but it will never actually touch the x-axis or it will never actually reach zero. Okay, it'll never actually reach zero. It'll never actually touch the, the x-axis. Okay, but it will always be approaching the x-axis. Now, that uh, phenomenon Okay, let me just uh, try to erase. Now that phenomenon, okay, the, pheno the tendency of the graph, the tendency of this graph, the tendency of this graph to approach the x-axis but never reach the x-axis brings us to um, something that we know as the asymptote, okay? So it brings us to something that we call the asymptote. Asymptote, this is how you write it, asymptote. Okay, now what is the asymptote? The asymptote is an imaginary line. It's an imaginary line that your graph always approaches but never reaches. Okay, so let me just uh, write that down in the next slide. Okay, and then I'll come back to it um, or in the next, uh, in the bottom part of this page. So your asymptote, your asymptote, and that's the first feature of this graph that um, we're going to look at. Okay, so the asymptote is an imaginary line. It is an imaginary line that the graph approaches but never touches or never reaches. 
So the graph will always be approaching that line, but it will never touch or reach it. Okay. It'll never touch the line or it'll never reach the line. That's what an asymptote is. And that's what, um, that's what that line is. So now what is our asymptote here? Well, looking at this graph, our asymptote, as I've indicated previously, is the x-axis. Okay, the asymptote is our x-axis. Why is our x-axis our asymptote? Well, because this graph that we're looking at here, this graph that we're looking at, you can see that it's always approaching your x-axis. It's always approaching your x-axis, but it never reaches your x-axis. So it'll never touch the x-axis, even though it gets very close to your x-axis, it never touches your um, your x-axis. So the x-axis in this case is your asymptote. Okay, so the x-axis for this original graph is your asymptote. So whenever you're thinking of the exponential graph and you are um, thinking of its asymptote, just think of the line that the exponential graph always approaches but never touches. And remember that it's the x-axis and remember that um, the asymptote is your x-axis. Now, this is for this original graph, okay? This is for this original graph. Now, this is the reason why I want to call it the original graph because you can change this graph, right? You can do things to this, graph, to this equation. You can manipulate this equation such that the asymptote is not the, um, the x-axis. Okay, you can make the asymptote a different, um, a different horizontal line um, by changing this equation, but we will look at that later on. But this is what your exponential graph looks like. Now, this will hold. Okay, this will hold no matter what the number there is. Doesn't matter what the number there is. It can be one, it can be two, it can be three, it can be a million. As a matter of fact, it can't be one because then you won't get... Um, you won't get an exponential so it can be three it, ca it can be any number greater than um than one okay can be any number greater than one so um remember what the original form looked like okay let's just go back up the original form is y is equal to a to the power of x y is equal to a to the power of x so a can be any number greater than 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 one Okay, can be any number greater than one for this to hold. Okay, so it can be any number greater than one, doesn't matter what the number is. Okay, let me just uh, go back down there and um, erase that stuff. Okay, so that's the first feature that I wanted us to focus on with our exponential graph. It's the asymptote, okay? The fact that as we move towards the left for our original graph, the um, graph tends to approach the x-axis but never touches the x-axis. Okay, the second feature of the original graph that I want us to look at is the intercept there. Okay, it's the y-intercept there. Now, your original graph, regardless of what the number is here, as long as that number is greater than 1, the, uh, the intercept there, the y-intercept there, will be 0 and 1. Okay, those are the coordinates of your intercept. Now, let's show you an example. Okay, let's say you've got, let's let's come up with another equation, a random equation. Let's say you've got y is equal to 3 to the power of x. Now, if I say, what is the value of y? What is the value of y when x is equal to zero because remember that's what your intercept is that's what your y-intercept is right your y-intercept is the value of y through which the graph passes when your x is equal to zero right so um what is your y-intercept there in this okay your y-intercept in this case you just have to wherever you have an x you just put in a zero so y is equal to three to the power of zero okay what is three to the power of zero well three to the power of zero is equal to one Okay, so then when x is equal to 0, y is equal to 1. Cool, let's say we have a different equation. y is equal to 4 to the power of x. And I'm looking for my y-intercept. Okay, and I say, what is my y-intercept? Well, my y-intercept is the value of y when x is equal to 0. Okay, cool. So instead of writing in x, I'm just going to put in 0. 4 to the power of 0 is 4 to the power of 0, okay, which is 1. So then my y-intercept is 0 and 1. Okay, so let's do another one. Let's say I have y to the power of 40, right? 
I mean, y is equal, sorry, y is equal to 40 to the power of x. And I say, what is my y-intercept? Well, my y-intercept is the value of y when x is equal to 0. So y is equal to 40 to the power of 0, which is equal to 1. So you will see that the values of y that I'm getting are all 1s, right? They are all 1s. The values of y that I'm getting are 1s. So it doesn't matter what the value here is. This value does not matter as long as the graph takes on this form. Y is equal to 3, I mean y is equal to a to the power of x. My intercept, right, my y-intercept will be, my y-intercept will be that value there. 0, x will be 0 and y will be equal to 1. Okay, and um, this is basically your, your exponential function in its simplest form. We can change it, we can make amendments, we can adjust it, we can do things to it to make it take up different forms, but this is essentially your exponential function. And the two most important things to remember about your exponential function is that um, the y-intercept is that, and your asymptote is at y is equal to zero, where this corresponds to your x-axis. Okay, this corresponds to your x-axis. Okay, and this is what your graph looks like. Now, if you look at this graph here, let me just, uh, a final note, I think I will uh, look at the amendments in the next video, or the different things that you can do to this graph in the next video, so that you change your asymptote and you change the y-intercept. Okay, but for the original graph, remember, for the original graph, the y-intercept is 0 and 1, and the um, asymptote is um, at y is equal to 0 or on your x-axis. Now, if you look at this graph here on the right, um, let me just do this. If you look at this graph here on the right, what happens as the graph, as your x values increase? As your x values increase, your values of y also increase dramatically. Okay, they increase excessively, they increase at an accelerated pace. Okay, so um, in other words, let's give you an example that's using actual numbers, right? Let's say you've got y is equal to, I'm going to use this one again, 2 to the power of x. Well, when x is equal to 1, when x is equal to 1, y is equal to 2 to the power of 1, which is equal to 2, right? When x is equal to 2, y is equal to 2 to the power of 2, which is equal to 4. When x is equal to 3, y is equal to 2 to the power of 3, which is equal to 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8, right? When x is equal to 4, y is equal to 2 to the power of 4, which is 16. So you see, by the time we get to the term number four, if this was a sequence, by the time we get to term number four, we, we jump from two to 16 already. So the increase in the values of y is accelerated. Okay, so the more we increase our values of x, the more we increase our values of x, the, the increase in our values of y is accelerated or it happens very quickly. And you can see this from the graph, right? You can see this from the graph. As we move towards the right, as we move towards the right, the graph increases very quickly at an accelerated pace, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to keep doing that um, as we increase our values of y, so as, as our, our values of x. So as we move to the left, the graph decreases, the values of y decrease at a decelerated pace, but as we move to the right, the values of y increase at an accelerated pace, and that is the nature of our exponential function. Okay, so whenever we say something increases exponentially, right, it, 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 it becomes the norm in uh, the English language to say that things increase exponentially to illustrate the fact that things accelerate uh, very quickly in the manner in which they increase or in the manner uh, by which they increase. Okay, so this is the original graph. Um, and this is what's important to know about your original graph. Okay, so just to uh, summarize everything, and then we will continue uh, with this in the next video, but just to summarize everything um, with this video, um, with, with our original exponential, 
the equation for our original exponential graph is y is equal to a to the power of x where a is greater than 1. Okay, so that's the first thing to know. This is your original equation. Original equation, and for our original equation, or for our original exponential graph, our y-intercept, okay? Our y-intercept will be 0 and 1. Okay, and our asymptote, our asymptote will be our asymptote is at y is equal to zero or on our x axis okay so these are the three main things that i wanted to highlight with our original graph and we will do a, a couple of examples in the next video to illustrate um the different changes and amendments we can make to this graph so that we can change these features. We can change the y-intercept, we can change the uh, the asymptote, and we will see what happens when we change the values of a so that they are negative. Okay, and we'll see what happens to a um, if we've got time when a is equal to 1 exactly. Okay, um, but I think this is a good time to stop for this video and we'll carry on with the amendments in the next video. Till next time. Listen number one, listen number one Listen number one, listen number one